Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany. Thank you for joining me. You can't see me, but I'm here. Uh, it's been a couple weeks since I had a new video, but um, had some things to take care of at home, and then here I am. So I decided to do like a little intro to GitHub. Like, how do I post a new um how do I post a new project to GitHub? Because I, I realized a lot of people, they're afraid to use the command line and then, or the terminal, and then they're also afraid to use Git Some as a new developer. Um, and you definitely shouldn't be afraid to use it. These are tools that are going to make your life easier once you master them. I'm going to be on my profile, and then I'm going to go to repositories. Um, and remember, this is just to get a new get this is just to get a new repository on your github page so when you click on it you are able to see the code and everything so this is the process that we're doing okay so I'm gonna go back to here go to repositories gonna click new this part is fine to do on your um, your interface it's fine I'm just gonna call this testing one, two, three. Okay, and and you could put a description here. Um, testing GitHub repo. It's almost a good idea to always do that, as well as to initialize what a README. What this README does is the README is basically gonna allow you the ability, for others the ability to to read what's going on before they decide to um, want to either make a fork your website or clone it or, or of this sort. So the README is important. That's where you put the technologies that you're using. That's what you use to give instructions to the user if there's additional instructions. So I'm going to create a repository. And now I have a repo. Well, not really. <laughs> so what I have now is basically this um, readme file that says testing one, two, three. That's all it is. And in here it has my description that I had. Okay. So what we're going to do instead of doing these, we're going to go through the command line and do this. So what I am um, going to do is I am going to clone this so I'm going to copy this URL so I can put it here so the command that we're going to use is git clone and then paste the link and this is going to clone what we have so far inside of our um, repo that we're in and in this case it's testing one two three so we're going to enter okay cool Okay, now let's clear this. Clearing just takes you back to the top. Now, if I were to ls, ls allows you to list the items that are in this particular folder. And right now we have a folder inside of here called testing123, okay, which is the exact name of our repository. Now, if I wanted to, I could have just created a folder on my desktop well, I didn't have to really create a folder on my desktop. And I always make that mistake of making a folder and then making and then cloning it. And then here I have two folders in here, but I don't really need it. That's a common mistake. And I still will sometimes make that mistake, as you could tell. So I'm going to just go into this testing one, two, three. So change directory on a Mac, it's CD. And then if I ls again, it should give me that readme file that I was looking for earlier. So here is this readme file. And if I wanted to open this readme file, uh, I can do um, I'll just go the old fashioned way, add project folder. And uh, Actually, okay, so, 
from our desktop, if we just go into this testing one, two, there should be a folder called testing one, two, three. And we should be able to go into that. And then if we ls, it's going to show what's in this folder. And it's just that readme file that's here. Okay. So now I've lost my atom. Here it is. So I want to use this one. I'm going to open this one. And you see when you open it inside of your text editor, it has um, like this little link here. This is your GitHub. This means it's connected to GitHub. That's what that means. And of course, as your .git files, you can get ignored, all those things. And here's your readme file, right? So it has your description in it for right now. Um, this is basically for uh, future directions on how to use your app. Um, also, this is, like I mentioned earlier, earlier, this is where you put the technologies used in app. And I'm just writing this down, so um, hopefully it'll help you. Um, and then also, uh, technologies used in app. And then any, like, yeah, general directions. Sometimes if it's a, um, if it's something where you can participate in, um, like open source project, they'll have like directions on how to um, contribute to open source. So, I mean, that's another thing that you can utilize this for. So, as you can see, it also has changes highlighted off to the side. Um, depending on which text, text editor you're using, it's going to depend on um, what color it is but these just means that these were added to here to this file I'm also going to add a new file and it's just going to be an HTML file I'm just going to go ahead and save it and as you can see I'm inside of this directory desktop one two three and then here is the app that I'm in so I'm just going to say test.html and everything test. <laughs> okay, so now we have a new file and then we also have some changes. So if I go back to my command line and I do a git status, I always recommend doing a git status whenever you're working with git especially if you get a little lost, huh, no pun intended, um, it'll kind of tell you what to do in most cases and point you in the right direction. So basically what this is telling me is that I have some changes here that I've modified. I've got a new file that I've added, but it's not in Git right now, so it's untracked. Um, so it can't really tell me anything about it because I don't have it inside of my repo or my repository. And then it says use git add and or git commit dash a. And so it's basically telling you what you can do, right? And it also says at the top here, use git add and then the file name and to update what will be committed. Okay, so I'm going to do git add. Myself personally, I do the period. I do git add period and that adds all the files. Um, usually if I'm at work and there is only one file, or there's only one file that I want to be committed to this particular branch that I work in branches at work. So if it's only one particular folder I want to add to this or one file I want to add to it, then I'll just add that particular file. Um, so I would do something like uh, this. So I would copy it and then I'm just going to paste it. Right. And then you can do the same thing with this. and then paste this as well. So it's basically saying you want to add test HTML and readme.html. And then if I enter, I can do another get status. Okay, now instead of red, now instead of being in red like it was up here, it's green, which means, hey, we're almost there, right? So these are changes that need to be committed 
So if I go back over here and refresh, it's still not going to show up here inside of my repo because they're not committed and they're definitely not pushed. So if I do a git commit dash m, always do dash m because that's the message that you're going to put on GitHub. These messages are really important when you're when you're working in a group and they're also important when you have your own project because they're kind of like little reminders of what you did and and um to these files that you're in. So it's very important. Uh, I you, I tell everybody like make your messages count because one day you're gonna go back and read them. Sometimes mine can get a little crazy, especially while I'm working. I like to make sure that I know what what these files are because a lot of times I'm doing like a feature that's inside of these files that I'm using or something like that or updates, and I want to make sure that I'm keeping track of what I'm updating. The whole point of GitHub is so that you can track your changes and everything. And I feel like if you're not tracking what you're actually doing, like in an actual message, if it doesn't make any sense, then it's kind of, you know, ridiculous really. Cause then, you, I mean, you can go back and look at the code or whatever, but it makes more sense to go ahead and be like, okay, this is what I actually did in a message rather than reading through all the files. So I added a test HTML file and updated README with how to use it. Kind of vague, but if I go back and look at this, I'll know what I mean. Okay, now it tells me that it tells me my message and it also signs it like an ID number and it tells me that it's on master. Master is gonna be the branch that you're on when you first create a new project, when you first create a new repo in GitHub. This master is gonna be what you're on. If you wanna have another branch, which I definitely recommend doing and we'll go over, um, then you'll want to create a new branch and then this will not say branch master it'll say branch whatever name that you call it here um, but that's for a later video for right now we just want our to get our project up and to do that we can use master and this is under the assumption that you're working on this project on your own and you haven't formulated inside of a group yet you just want your code on github Okay, so it told me that I've got two files changed and it tells me what has been inserted. I haven't deleted anything from these files. If I did, it would have told me uh, deletions as well. Okay, and then if we want to push this to our page, because still, if I refresh over here, there's still nothing here. <laughs> it's like, oh man, it's still not there. So if you do a git push origin master, origin master is going to be the branch that we're on. In this case, like I mentioned, we're on master, so that's what, that's what we're going to push to. And if I enter, it's going to um, work its magic, which is basically pushing all of our data up there. And it tells you kind of how long it takes and um, what it's doing in the process, which is cool. So if I refresh, I should see I should see my files, and I do. Um, you see, I have my new updates here, which it didn't really look how I thought it was gonna look, but hmm, something to think about. And then it has my HTML here that I had just made. So that's how you do it. If you're looking to um, push up your project to GitHub, this is pretty much the directions you need in order to do it. If we want to recount what we did, we basically created a new repo in our, um, or repository in our interface, which is over here. And then we got the URL, we cloned it over here. Let's see, I can't go up, yes I can. We cloned it here to our actual machine and then we went through the process of git status, which I told you was a big one to use if you ever get lost. Um, and then we basically, after that, we, um, we added our files 
we committed our files and then we pushed them and that's pretty much it any other changes you'll do the same thing you'll add them um, and then you could add each individual file if you want like I did here or you can do get add a which you won't have to list them all out it will just add them all for you and then commit and push that's pretty much it so don't be afraid of the command line guys it's your friend trust me <laughs> um, it'll be very beneficial for you uh, I hope that this was helpful for you all um, if it was I'm glad that it was helpful and um, I'll see you guys in the next one